Hi, everybody. It's Stephanie Boozer with CUGC HQ. Welcome to today's Connect webinar with Tenzig. I'm happy to welcome you back to the webinar stage today. Um, before we jump in, just a quick reminder that we have lots of CUGC events coming up. If you're new to CUGC, um, definitely go to our website. You can see the link down at the bottom of your screen to the, our events calendar. There's lots of stuff going on and you just wanna find your local group, find your city. We've got them all over the world, see what's going on get registered. Um, we've got some virtual events obviously coming up. Um, next week we have a user share that is um, someone from the community who's coming up um, wanting to share their own knowledge and uh, this is Owen Reynolds. He's a Citrix technology advocate so he's got um, some best practices for sustainable Citrix implementations and he also has a companion blog post that goes with it so check that out. Um, and then coming up in June is our XL. The next one is the Northeast region. So we've got lots of great speakers lined up for that. So check that one out as well. Alrighty, just a couple of housekeeping details for everyone. Um, we are recording today's session. You'll get a link to the recording tomorrow. It's going to come to you in an email directly from GoToWebinar, so be on the lookout for that. Um, also, you can submit your questions in the question chat box anytime. Um, be sure to do it when you have them so that you don't forget them, and uh, we'll try to take as many as we can today. And finally, at the end of the session, I'll throw a link in the chat to a survey. It's short and anonymous and for CGC use only. We just like to get your feedback on our webinars, helps us plan for, for future events. All right, so I'm gonna introduce our, our webinar companions. We have Kevin Greenway. He is the CTO of Tenzig. Hi, Kevin. I think he's Hi, coming Stephanie. to us. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, a okay. little <laughs> audio delay. <laughs> um, also, we have Carl Webster. He's going to be our moderator today. He's going to be keeping an eye on uh, on all those questions that you put in the chat for us. So <laughs> yes, he was <is> watching. <laughs> Keep keeping me honest. All right. So I'm going to hand things right on over to you, Kevin. I'm going to send you the screen right now. So here it comes. Oops. Mouse over there, okay. And yeah, I'm gonna turn off it. my camera and I'll see you guys in a little while. That's great, thanks uh, Stephanie. Let me just make sure I am sharing the right screen. Yes, I am, hopefully everybody can see the uh, the first slide. So um, yeah, I'm Kevin Greenway. Let me just get this out of view. And um, thank you for having me here at today's CUGC. I'm really excited to be presenting uh, and just a quick, background of myself first. So I've been with Tenzig for nine years and experience in Citrix amongst other EUC and BDI products. I head up the R&D and support teams um, globally at Tenzig and work closely with all of our departments pretty much and uh, also manage the relationship with uh, Citrix Ready and uh, other partners as, as part of our ecosystem. So I'm here today to present the latest from uh, Tenzig and Citrix around our unified communications offerings. And that includes Microsoft Teams optimization improvements, as well as Cisco WebEx VDI support. And this will include a, a demonstration on the recently introduced Cisco WebEx VDI support. So uh, we'll kick off in a second, but I think just to start, we've got uh, poll question number one, if you wouldn't mind, please, Stephanie. So it's, are you using Tenzig Thin or Zero clients already? So if you wouldn't mind answering the question, just so I can gauge uh, our audience today, please. All right, that's good. So uh, yeah, good good mixture there, and it looks like we've we've got some new friends to the table. So uh, thanks again for joining. So I'll continue on. So a quick background, firstly on Tenzig for for those who are not aware. We're solely focused as a thin and zero client vendor, and we specialise in Citrix amongst other VDI and EUC products. We're headquartered in Phoenix, Arizona, with our EMEA office in the UK which is, uh, as you can probably tell from my accent, uh, where, where I'm based. Uh, and we're a founding Citrix Ready partner, which basically means that we certify all of our products 
on the Citrix Ready Marketplace. And where we were able to differ from competitors is that we're solely focused and our staff um, through sales and technical support uh, are skilled in Citrix through training and certification, which really take our uh, pre-sales and post-sales and support to the next level. We're a front runner in many Citrix innovations, which included the recently introduced Citrix Ready Workspace Endpoint program, as well as being certified on our thin clients for Skype for Business, and more recently, Microsoft Teams and Zoom VDI. And our company motto, which is more relevant than ever, is that we make our product fit your environment and not the other way around. And, and as mentioned, that's really more critical than ever with the fact that we're dealing with really fast paced and changing times and obviously dealing with end user computing, which is, which is essentially now remote working. So very quickly, just to discuss our Citrix Ready endpoints and then, and then we'll kick off. So we have a range of zero clients plus thin clients based on Linux and Windows. All our endpoints are Intel and AMD based. And as you can see, include a wide array of hardware options, such as varying display connectivity, USB-C, fiber and PoE. All of our Tenzig endpoints include enterprise free centralized management via the Tenzig manager. And we also offer cloud enablement for remote management. We have a range of teams optimized Citrix ready endpoints. And we also offer a flexible demo program for anybody wanting to trial our products in your uh, Citrix environment or POCs. So this slide then brings us to the hot topic of today and the trend for Tenzig over the past year, or to be precise now, 14 months. Um, and that's really the exponential demand for unified communication apps. And this particular usage scenario is literally upturned the books of end users computing and in particular using such applications in a, a desktop or application remoting scenario. So let's take a, a moment just to assess the growth here and uh, put things into a little bit of perspective. So firstly, Microsoft Teams quickly surged to 44 million active users way back in March 2020 at the start of the pandemic. And we did another quick search before the webinar. And as you can see, astonishingly, that's risen to 115 million today. And Secondly, an engineering firm had, saw a 129% increase in AV minutes and 143% increase in participants on their UC platform. And then finally, specifically in China, way back in February 2020, Cisco saw 22 times the amount of uh, network traffic just in China alone that was consolidated for Cisco WebEx traffic. And then if we sort of turn that trend towards today where again majority of employees are communicating through uc and collaboration tools um, so the future or the position that we're at at the moment is somewhat sketchy um, in terms of whether businesses and employees are going to i guess work in a permanent work from home situation a return to the office or a hybrid of both in uh, what's what's referred to as the flexible option but what we see on the slide here and specifically not calling out the UC platform, but it seems to be a, a general trend, is the fact that we can see the revenue growth from Q4 2019, as well as revenue projections um, right through to Q4 2021. And again, just to bring up some further interesting stats here, um, Gartner make the assumption that by 2022, 74% of organizations will move at least 5% of their workforce from temporary work from home to permanent remote working. But I think certainly what we're sort of hearing and seeing in talking to people and reading the media is that 82% um, of company leaders plan to allow their employees to work remotely some of the time as we head out of the pandemic. And this again adds to that whole discussion around the flexible working approach, which really gives the best of both worlds of remote working plus office to get that physical collaboration back. And then finally, Million Insights then predicts that the UC market will reach 167 billion by 2025. And that shows an, a compound annual growth rate of 16.8% between the years stated. So this really sets the path for the future. And as we'll move on now, how Tenzig are embracing this future. And uh, we just have poll question two again, please, Stephanie.
So again, really appreciate everybody's response here. All right, so there we go. So it does definitely look as if the consensus is on uh, flexible and hybrid working. So thanks again for uh, for taking the time to answer that. So the purpose of this uh, next slide is to briefly discuss the potential problem of using unified communication and collaboration platforms in a virtual environment such as Citrix. And this problem has been exacerbated further in a remote working environment, as I'll explain. So the user's endpoints, again, let's assume now that they're both at home locations uh, where they're dealing with video and voice, have to forward video and voice between the end user's home locations towards the data center, whether it's on premise or whether it's in, in the cloud. And that audio video stream is then converted at the virtual desktop um, and then forwarded either to the other peer, if it's a peer-to-peer -peer call or peer-to-peer -peer solution, or it traverses through the, the UC solution, which again could be in the cloud as is demonstrated here or on premise. And whilst Citrix has some long-standing HDX compression techniques to improve these scenarios, so for example, it can compress quite significantly the webcam and audio between these two, these two points. As you can see, it generates this well-known and famous kind of hairpin or trombone effect where the voice is really having to travel around the whole circuit. And that ultimately adds latency and delay, but also more importantly, um, adds the compute uh, demand onto the virtual desktops. All of that webcam encoding is, and, and the voice encoding is done on the virtual desktop and leaves really the endpoints pretty much to a, an idle situation. So this solution these days is pretty, pretty much considered a fallback and is generally not uh, recommended as we'll explain. So the preferred approach and specifically the, the big change over last year, I mean, this solution has been around for a few years now, but a lot of the UC vendors have adopted this same approach is to encode that same audio and video locally at the endpoint um, using something like a thin client that's equipped with a media engine alongside the Citrix workspace app and um, then allows really the users that if they're in a voice call that the voice and the video i.e. the SRTP traverses between the two users directly so the point here is it never traverses through the VDA so all of that compute power is relinquished and, and freed up so again if you if you cloud-based specifically that's going to really uh, offer up a lot of savings and if it's a UC solution uh, that's cloud-based again the voice in the video is going directly to that UC solution and not towards the data center that's specifically hosting the, the BDI. So you're eliminating effectively redundant paths with this as well and improving the user experience to the same degree you would expect from a regular uh, desktop or, or laptop. So this is a really important slide that kind of breaks it down even further and it focuses on the framework and SDK that's available from Citrix, which is the Platform Optimization and Virtual Channel SDK. And this is provided to um, Unified Communication and Collaboration Partners. So the Unified Communication application um, is installed to the virtual desktop or, or published app as it is as per normal. But uh, the, the change is that it's essentially VDI aware. So it's either a separate installation that's VDI specific or it's installed in a specific scenario, such as with a, a, a switch when you install the app to make it VDI aware. That then synchronizes with the Citrix VDA and the HDX components. And what effectively happens is the authentication, the signaling remains at the Unified Communications app because they're the kind of low latency and, and, and low power as far as compute power um, processes and then the media engine specifically the parts that do the the grunt work the, the encoding of the video and the and the voice they effectively get uh, offloaded to the endpoint so the endpoint hosts the citrix workspace app as well as the media engine 
and then it deals with the voice and the video traffic directly. And then it's synchronized through the HDX transport layer using the media and the call control virtual channel. So it's essentially encapsulated exactly the same way that the incoming uh, display and graphics and audio are to the endpoint and, and encapsulated into one. So with that, it's just a good opportunity to summarize Tenzig's activity in this area um, really since the early pandemic and, and work from home situation. So first we offered improved audio support um, for hot plugging of things like USB headsets. We also um, offered up very quickly the, the, the very latest LTSR version of the HDX real-time optimization pack and that actually offered some improvements to audio scenarios specifically for remote working. Uh, also significantly Microsoft Teams optimization. So Tenzig were amongst the first here to integrate for both our Windows and Linux based clients. And we were able to offer customers who were literally chomping at the bit back in April last year to get access to the uh, EAR versions for Linux. And then in very quick succession, we also added support for Zoom VDI, um, which is also now natively integrated into our firmware. And the long-standing Cisco Jabber is um, also continue to be supported and we've kept pace with that with the uh, with the release cycles and kind of in sync with that we've covered a lot of uh, content in and around this area over the past year um, both through the cugc and uh, with, with citrix directly and uh, there's a number of videos on the tenzig uh, youtube site that you can get access to to hopefully deep dive a little bit more if some of these topics interest you so there's been some really good improvements to Teams optimization, which are, which are no, no, worthy to note, getting tongue-tied there. So starting out firstly with Citrix Workspace at 2101. Uh, it's now packaged with Microsoft Teams ringtones and also significantly where users are plugging in headsets, they are now transposed uh, seamlessly uh, to the Teams app application. So if a user arrives and plugs in, let's say, a USB headset, that becomes the, uh, the default device. Secondly, with Citrix Workspace app 2103 for Linux, and that's integrated into our current firmware, the VP9 video codec is now disabled by default in favor of H.264. And just to cover a little bit more on this, VP9 was traditionally the default video codec for Teams peer-to-peer uh, -peer calls, uh, whereas H.264 was used in conjunction with Teams meeting calls. Um, VP9 generally offers greater bandwidth savings, but at the expense of quite significant encoding overhead, and H.264 uh, benefits from lower powered endpoints. And the general, the general scheme has been that it's offered a greater combined uh, experience. And then last but not least is Citrix Workspace app for uh, 2104 for Linux which again is available in uh, Tenzig firmware, and that offers further improvements, in, including fixes for choppy audio in certain use cases, as well as echo cancellation, which is disabled by default. And um, that's really through use of users, generally using things like inbuilt speakers and, and soundbars, et cetera. So the general recommendation from Citrix at this point in time is to use uh, USB headsets. Moving on to a really um, significant feature, probably the biggest one of all in honesty, is the gallery view. So just to explain this one for anybody who's not aware, in early versions of the Teams using leveraging the optimize mode, where a user participated in a meeting with multiple video participants, one major limitation was that the user operating in optimize mode could only ever see a single video stream simultaneously. So just to put that into perspective on this slide, let's say that I have a meeting. These are the four participants in that meeting. In an optimized mode, I would only ever see one speaker in the window and the other three users would be in the bottom bar here and their video would be muted. What it, how it worked was it worked based on the most dominant uh, speaker in the party, which was great if everybody took their turn to talk, but invariably what happens in a, especially in a remote working scenario, you get dogs barking, you get the kids homeschooling or coming home from school. So it could make for quite a confusing user experience. 
So um, that has that has now changed with the fact that um, users of Teams in optimize mode can can benefit from the gallery mode at last. It is currently yeah. two by two. Yes, Carl. Uh, we have a quick question here from Matthew Ash. How do you support teams in a non-persistent VDI environment? So in a non-persistent environment, there, there is some articles which I'll link to at the end, which okay. uh, really talk through different scenarios of how to deploy teams in both the persistent and a non-persistent uh, environment. So there are use cases for both. And again, I'll link to those at, uh, at the end of the webinar. Okay, thank you. Question, thanks. So for the, the gallery mode specifically, it is limited to just two by two at the moment, but it's basically a tap that Microsoft and, and Citrix expect to turn as they gather feedback. Um, and that does require a specific version of the Teams desktop app, as you can see uh, slated on the slide here. So it's that as a minimum version. And it is important to mention that for things like the gallery view, and Tenzig have always recommended pretty much anything in our mid-range or higher for, to leverage uh, the, the video calls, particularly the meeting with the fact that it can become quite busy. So that would be something like the 6048 QC uh, for Linux or 6010Q for Windows or in the past generation, something like the 5800Q series. Uh, so that's that. Also significantly, and this literally came across this by accident, and I haven't really been able to find a, a real source of this yet. So this is really even more exciting to share. Um, two new preview mode features that are available in Teams with Citrix in an optimized mode. So firstly, large gallery view is also now available within Teams. And this extends further past the two by two mode, as you can see from this, this uh, specific example that we uh, captured yesterday. And then also the familiar together mode. So again, if, you're, if you prefer the together mode, which puts you into like an auditorium or a meeting room where everybody's in the same room, that is also now featured. So again, a little bit like the feature before, it is specific to a Teams desktop app. Now, again, I haven't been able to confirm as yet the, the specific version number where it came, but uh, this is the version that we lifted the VDA to yesterday and were able to leverage both of these features in, in preview mode. So again, really, these features alone are the biggest things, probably the biggest kind of roadblocks that hit the team's optimization in the early days where really the, the user experience was somewhat different uh, with using Teams in an optimized mode versus regular Teams desktop app. So yeah, really, really, really good features there. We've also um, added something additional to our firmware um, in the last and latest release as well. And that's in relation to the performance estimator for Microsoft Teams. So the performance estimator is there to negotiate with the, with the client hardware to set the webcam encoding size for Teams based on the performance of the endpoint. Now, the early versions going back to say the 2006 release were very aggressive in uh, pretty much demarking everything as, as low powered and they would force the webcam to 360p. So not only has that uh, performance estimator improved and it queries pretty much all of our hardware uh, specifically to the point, but you can also now override that as well. So, so that works hand in hand. You can either increase the encoding size um, if you plentiful bandwidth and you've got adequate hardware to support it, but you can also reduce it if you have a user, let's say, in a really remote location with very sort of poor bandwidth, etc. So that can be done as you as you can see from this drop down. Now, just to explain quickly, disabled is the default, and that basically means that the performance estimator is um, is on and it, it will negotiate with hardware. But you can then override that uh, dependent on your requirements. And one final thing to point out is 1080p is, is currently not supported um, by Microsoft, I believe. So 720p is the uh, is is the current maximum. And if you set it to 1080p, it'll fall back to 720p. By the way. All right, Kevin. So then, uh, yeah, have another question before you get to the WebEx because there's already been a WebEx question. So after you talk on WebEx, I'll give you the WebEx question. 
So yeah. uh, user asked, this is Chris Thomas, was that mention of large gallery in together mode available in the HDX optimized version or the web version? It's the H, it's a good question. It's the HDX optimized version. So it's in the Teams desktop app um, and not, uh, we haven't focused anything on the web app uh, side okay. of Teams. Then he says, what version of the app in the VDA in the OS is required, to, I guess, to get so the that, large that, gallery in together yeah, mode? That, that side is is independent um on our side um i believe we are using the ltsr version of uh, citrix um and it was basically delivered through the team's desktop app that version that's uh, that's slated here and that's that's a significant point to mention that these features that have come both in terms of the gallery and these two preview mode features they're independent of the citrix workspace app and also the VDA, they're actually delivered through updates to the Teams desktop app with the fact that it's based on the, uh, the underlying um, web, web RTC stack. Okay, and another Teams question, does Blur background now work with Team in VDA or Teams? Currently it's VDA? still not, uh, currently Blur background unfortunately is still not supported. That's again, I link to an article at the end uh, that Citrix pretty much updates um, every day that um, lists any current limitations. And I'm far, as far as I'm aware, that's more a Microsoft SDK limitation than necessarily a Citrix um, limitation. Um, but again, that's, that's linked to that at the end of the presentation. Okay. Certainly would encourage users to go to that. And I'm pretty sure that specific um, point is called out for, for anybody interested in that feature to talk directly to uh, Microsoft. Okay, so anything they're wanting to know about configuring the Teams gallery, uh, they can get the links at the end of the presentation and do their, uh, yeah. their research. Okay, all right. Exactly, yeah. So yeah, with the with the again with the gallery view, there's a blog here that I've linked to. So we'll be linking the, this slide deck as a PDF at the end. So there's, there's a blog here that specifically talks about that. But like as mentioned, it is essentially delivered through a Teams desktop app update. You don't need to do any additional configuration. It's essentially unlocked by, um, by using that as a, as a minimum version in the Teams desktop app. The only thing from our side to be aware of, again, is that you're doing this on a minimum of the 58 or the 6000 6, series of Tenzig hardware. All right, for people that have a uh, VMware infrastructure back, um, environment, uh, do they need to have, or do you recommend, or I guess does Tenzig recommend that they have like uh, GPU cards in the host in order to help with this, uh, the Teams and WebEx and stuff like that? It's generally generally not recommended. Uh, if the if they haven't got uh, GPUs in the back end, then it is recommended again on one of those articles that I'll link to it at the end to turn off hardware acceleration within Teams, but the, the main bulk of the, the, I guess, the process overhead or process overhead for Teams is in the video encoding. And, and again, that part gets shifted off to the, uh, to the physical endpoint. So yeah, as far, if you're not using it with vGPU, it is recommended to, uh, to turn off the hardware acceleration for the native Teams desktop app. But again, a lot of it is relinquished anyway by offloading that to the to the endpoint and moving it away from the from the VMs. All right, that's all the team's questions. Awesome, thanks. So let's uh, let's press on and get uh, over back to Cisco WebEx. And uh, again, more exciting hot news. Um, so we've just recently released support for Cisco WebEx as well. And again, this is due entirely to feedback and demand from our existing customers who again uh, leverage Cisco WebEx either during or before the pandemic and all of a sudden want to deliver it through Citrix. Um, it's just worth pointing out because I don't think Cisco WebEx is quite as well known as Microsoft Teams that the Cisco WebEx comes in two different flavors. It comes as Cisco WebEx app which recently changed its title from Cisco WebEx Teams. Again not to me confused with Microsoft Teams 
and it also comes as Cisco WebEx Meetings um, or Cisco WebEx Meetings desktop app. So both of those features are supported by the VDI plugin and our customers can get access to that again through the same firmware that's linked here, both in terms of signing up to our firmware notifications as well as downloading the, the relevant firmware to support that. Um, and the demonstration, I can't, I can't remember if I covered it on the intro slide, but I'll be giving a demo of both the features we just talked about for Microsoft Teams as well as um, demonstrating the Cisco WebEx uh, VDI support. So this demonstrates the WebEx VDI architecture now, and it should, should um, sort of resemble the same thing that you saw in the earlier slide around the SDK framework, where the endpoint, i.e. the Tenzig client in this case, is equipped with the uh, Citrix Workspace app for Linux. Uh, it also has the two plugins embedded into the firmware, and then the WebEx app or WebEx Meetings app is installed in the Citrix VDA. Now, again, I'll cover this during the demonstration, but, but that's referred to as installing that into HVD mode, which is Cisco's term for hosted virtual desktop. Um, so that part essentially enables the, the both apps for VDI mode. And what happens from that point is the WebEx and the WebEx Meetings app communicate with the Citrix VDA or the virtual delivery agent. And that in turn, as we saw with the SDK framework, communicates with all of the core control channel through the HDX uh, protocol here. And again, like we saw in the SDK framework, the things like the signaling, authentication, controlling and sharing in yellow here are remain with, with, the, with the WebEx app and the WebEx Meetings app the WebEx sharing traffic. So if a user does a screen share, that is also done at the VDA. So it's the VDA that encodes that screen and shares that to WebEx Cloud. And the, the plugins that sit on the endpoint, i.e. the Tenzig client, that um, encapsulates audio and video traffic. So they traverse directly from the endpoint to Cisco WebEx Cloud. So again, hopefully that puts into perspective the architecture there for uh, WebEx. So now we're going to switch to a demo. Do you have time for web, the, the one WebEx question? Yeah, sure, Cole. Go ahead. Okay. Um, this is from Wilmer. I'm going to butcher your name. Sorry, Heredia. Uh, how can we do WebEx cameras if we have all VDI on data center and the 10 zigs on the facilities? currently video quality is low so if you'd have been we've only just introduced this feature so historically if you'd have used webcams with Cisco WebEx it would have forwarded the webcam through the traditional HDX webcam compression technique that the slide that we covered before where if you work in the kind of fallback mode where the webcam is forwarded in, in a compressed state between the endpoint and Cisco WebEx it would have worked in, in that scenario. So in the VDI mode, which is where the plugin encodes directly at the webcam, that's what you would uh, deliver to deliver that improved uh, visual quality of the webcams, as we'll see in the demo. Good. Any more questions so far on, uh, on that's WebEx? It. That's it. Okay. So let's let's go for the demo. Let's uh, fingers crossed things work as they did this morning. I've got a recording to fall back to, worst case, but let's go for it. So this is the Tenzig Manager console where I'm going to shadow uh, specifically a 5848 QDC. And just to quickly recap, this particular model has been with us for probably the best part of four, maybe five years. Um, and again, it's just to prove the concept that the thin clients even this is a mid-range that's been in the portfolio for four to five years, can easily de deliver these, these new techniques and these new plugins, um, even to the highest standard today, which again is 720p on the, on the webcams. Uh, so I've already got a shadow session connected to that particular unit. And I've also, or haven't got it yet, but I'm gonna SSH to this client so that we can look at basically what's happening under the hood, both with Teams, and WebEx. So from the endpoint, I'm just going to put in the password just to show you a couple of relevant bits. 
So under security settings, I've set a password for the endpoint, and I've also enabled the option here to turn on the SSH client. So this is useful for debug and also if you're doing a POC to actually monitor the endpoint. This is more relevant today based on the fact that a lot of these HDX techniques actually offload overhead to the endpoints. So if we go ahead and um, we connect to the endpoint here via SSH, so signing in with root and then the password that we set in the in the control panel there. And if we go ahead and connect um, from there, I can start top, which is a performance monitor for Linux. And we can see at the moment that the client's pretty much idle. So if you just look at the CPU here, it's sat at around one and a half percent. And that's mostly taken up through the VNC uh, process here. So that's exactly what we'd expect at this point. Now, also just to cover, if we go to Citrix Workspace and we go firstly to Teams optimization, that's the options that I mentioned before. So the override performance, remember it's disabled by default, which means the performance estimator is on, and you can override that using any one of those options. If we also go to Cisco WebEx, that's where we can turn the WebEx VDI on, and that will enable uh, the plugin for both the WebEx app and the WebEx Meetings app. Just note that it is off by default, um, so you do have to turn it on, uh, as well as observing the Cisco EULA, which is, uh, which is linked below. So click OK to that. And apart from that, the client's connected in the usual way to point, uh, in this case, to Citrix Storefront, but we could connect to self-service, et cetera, if we're connecting to Citrix Cloud. So I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to log in. So we do have some non-persistent VMs here, but I'm going to connect for this demo to my personal uh, VM, which is persistent, just because so, I have obviously much more free, free reign on this uh, particular VM. So the first thing that we just want to cover is, uh, is Teams. Let's just give it a moment for all the processes to start. And as you can see, Teams is already running. Now, the first thing I want to do, which is already there, but I want to show you anyway, because this is always important for anybody that's doing uh, Citrix and Teams together and the rolling out the optimized mode, now, to verify that it's operating in the optimized mode, if you go to about and version, which it, as mentioned is already displayed here, we can see two significant things, the version of the Teams desktop app. And again, that coincides with the version number that we touched on before that offers the preview mode of the large gallery in the together mode. And we can also see the fact that it's operating in the HDX optimized mode. So that basically means that if we go to settings and we go to devices, all of our audio devices and our webcams are enumerated locally from the endpoint. So, so this webcam is actually connected to the endpoint, which is there in my uh, vacant empty office. Um, let's go ahead and let's just start a dummy meeting. Uh, click join now. And you might not be able to see it, but I can already see that that webcam is encoded at a good resolution, 7, 720p. Now, to prove that, we can, uh, this on this specific demo, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring again the SSH session back into view. Now, you can see now that the, that the endpoint is sat at around 45%. And that's made up of both the HDX RTC engine, so that's the media engine that's encoding the video, as well as the VNC process. So again, if we weren't shadowing the client, that would reduce. Now, bear in mind, these are specified in, in cores. So this could, because it's a quad core, so if I press number one here, you see we have four cores. So that could, in theory, go up to 400% before, before we're effective maximum. So you can see there's plenty of headroom there and again, this is on a effectively an old generation of hardware. Now, again, if I quit out of here and um, the next place that we want to go to is 
TMP slash WebRPC. And then in there, we have a number of different folders. So Teams generates a new folder for every instance where the desktop app is opened, or similarly, if we connect to a uh, Citrix session. So if I go to here and we identify the current session, which is that based on the time, the file, the, the actual log file is then called webrpc.log. So from here, I can do one of few things. I can cap that particular file and I can grep it um, based on the fact that I know the syntax to some degree in terms of what is output in there. So rather than trawl through the whole log file, I want to query based on performance. And we can see there that the WebRTC engine is detected the endpoint and it's detected that it's medium, which basically means it, it can encode up to 720p. And if I repeat that again, and do it based on height, which I know captures the webcam height, we can see here, look, that uh, the webcam is encoded at 1280 by 720p, and it's 30 frames per second. Now, like with any Teams application, you'll see it sort of shift up and shift down as Teams tries to work out the environment specifics, like what bandwidth is available, et cetera, but the capabilities of hardware permit 720p. So that's just, again, good to show that. And let's just bring top back into view again. So again, we can see the fact that the processor overhead or processor is around about 50%. And then if we come back to the virtual machine, and bearing in mind, based on the earlier question, this isn't a GPU enabled VM. This is, as we'll see, is I think it's four vCPUs. So four vCPUs, and if we look at the performance, you can see it's sat at around 9% at the moment. And again, if we focus in specifically on that, we can see that um, Teams certainly isn't significant in its overhead because of the fact that the endpoint's doing the work. Uh, there's things like the, desk, the regular desktop Windows Manager and also the Citrix Graphic Engine, which is responsible for encoding this part of the screen so they're the bits that are generally consuming the overhead on the virtual machine at this point in time. Hey, Kevin. So that concludes, yep. Quick question. For those of us who can barely spell Linux, uh, is, does uh, Tenzig have like a uh, support article or something that explains like that top and the grip and how to find the log files and all, all the stuff you just covered in your demo? We do, yeah. We have a we have an optimization guide specifically for Citrix and Teams, and again, I'll share that um, at the end. Um, okay. We also have a, a support team that's based in Phoenix, Arizona, that can assist with this. Honestly, it's not necessary that end users necessarily even have to dig into these log files. I do this purely out of I think feedback based on based from the community that people like to see these sorts of things to see what's happening under the hood, but certainly end users are not really expected to go this deep. And that's one of the, that's really one of the beauties of the Tenzig Linux, the fact that most users don't even know that it's running Linux, you know, there's a graphical front end and it's our job really to uh, to manage the back end. So it's only really for the, I guess, the Linux uh, fanboys out there that, for this oh, okay. part. So <laughs> Uh, an admin engineer could use the same commands also for uh, Citrix and WebEx. Yes. Okay. But let me just clarify that. So to do the same debug, did you mean with, with WebEx as well? Yes. So yeah, the answer is yes. And I'll do that in the next demo when we move across to, uh, to WebEx. Okay. So is there any more questions, Carl? Nope, that's it. Okay. So let's go ahead and open WebEx. But actually, I forgot one thing. Um, again, I covered it on the slide and it'll be back there at the end. But I created a, a readme for this because, again, it was pretty confusing to me. So I'm not sure if it will be to you guys as well. But there's two MSIs dependent on whether you're using WebEx app, again, which is formerly WebEx Teams or WebEx Meetings. Now, the MSI for WebEx app is called WebEx.MSI, which is easy enough. But then if you're using WebEx meetings, the MSI is called WebEx app. 
so just be just be aware of that not to get the two things confused um, and again there's the, the last slide recaps on that which again everybody will have access to now when you install in the webex app or the webex or webex meetings webex app the uh, the bit that uh, that enables the hvd are the switches here so all users equals one allows or installs it against all user profiles enable vdi equals one again specifically enables the hvd functionality and you also have to disable the auto upgrade enabled and that um, going back again to the teams example in a non-persistent environment that's covered in the teams guide that it's recommended that you deploy teams um, and you you disable the auto upgrade to again assist with the fact that you're using it in a, in a non-persistent environment so i have already installed webex and it is honestly as simple as that you run the msi you click next once you don't even have to go and make a cup of tea or coffee the job's done uh, so we sign into uh, webex and similar very similar to teams the way in which firstly we verify that it's operating in um, vdi mode is we can go to help and we can go to the health checker and the health checker you can see um, gives us the vdi functionality so if the vdi isn't ticked it's normally that you haven't installed it with that vdi switch as well as that um, uh, tick box are demonstrated in the tensic client to actually enable the the plugin but this gives us a summary of the webex client and the plugin version as well as the round trip time between the endpoint and uh, the cisco webex cloud services okay we now, have very a, we have a, yep, a question ahead. on on the two msis uh yep. mohammed want to know webex.msi is on the vdi and web app yep. msi is on the endpoint yeah that's a great question so both of these are both on the vdi so they're both on the citrix vda and it's just whether you as a cisco customer are running either webex app or webex meetings so they're both installed on the vda as far as the actual plugins concerned the bit that goes on the endpoint that is already baked into firmware. So the users don't need to do anything with that. It's already baked into the firmware. And all they need to do is either upgrade to that firmware, which again is covered back on that slide, and then enable that tick box, the uh, Cisco WebEx VDI. All right, uh, Corker, does Tenzig support soft phone clients like Avaya? Uh, Avaya is covered at the end. We don't currently support okay. Avaya for Linux. It is covered for Windows-based clients. And in a Linux environment, you could, in theory, use it with the HTX uh, real-time compression, where, again, the audio would be forwarded from the endpoint to the, uh, to the, the VDI. Um, we're really waiting for more input and demand for, for Avaya. We've heard it in a couple of different pockets over the past year, but certainly not to the extent of things like Cisco and Zoom and, and Teams before it. All right, and then also on WebEx, if the WebEx meetings is already installed on all our VDI computers, how can we enable VDI mode? Um, that's a good question. I don't believe there's a way to modify it. I would have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that it's a case of having to uninstall and reinstall with the uh, with with that VDI switch that I uh, demonstrated before. Okay, and, and this one I'm not really understanding um, the question um, mainly because I guess I don't use web. He wants uh, for the MSIs we have to use the switches on both sides to enable VDI mode. So I think that question again is dependent on whether you do the switches on both the endpoint and the, and the VDA. So just to clarify, if that is the question, just to clarify again, that both of these examples are both done inside the VDA. It's not, this is, you don't have to do this on the endpoint at all. If you're using a Tensig Linux client, the plugin is already pre-installed and it's just a case of enabling the, the plugin. These switches, are purely in the case of firstly this one is if you're using cisco webex app and use this one if you're using cisco webex meetings so they're two they're two different um products 
of uh, Cisco. You've got Cisco WebEx and you've got Cisco WebEx meetings and they're both different licenses, et cetera. Okay, and then at the end, you're gonna have a link for the optimization guides for stuff, okay. Correct, yeah, right. yeah. There's, there's, there's we're getting optimization handle. questions and I figure yeah. we can just wait to the end and they can yeah. see the links and down and, and read the articles. That's it. Yeah, all, hopefully all the links are there that people need both for Microsoft Teams and Cisco WebEx. Good to proceed? Yes, go. Thank you. Okay, so next thing, similar as we did with Microsoft Teams, if we go to settings and we go to video and audio, we should be able to see exactly the same sort of thing that um, the plugin on the endpoint, which again is pre-baked, is enumerating those towards the Cisco WebEx app that sits on the virtual desktop. So we see the same devices that we saw with uh, with Microsoft Teams. And if I go in here and as kind of as we did with uh, Microsoft Teams, we set up a dummy meeting. And I'm specifically just gonna leave it there because when I click start meeting, my webcam preview will actually reduce in size. And it's nice to have it bigger with the fact that it creates a bit more load. So again, similar sort of thing. If I go to task manager on the, on the virtual machine here, on the virtual desktop, you can see that um, the processor is, is pretty low in terms of its consumption. Again, it's really just the desktop window manager and the Citrix graphics engine that's creating the consumption. And that's really because of the task manager that's, that's moving around and creating that uh, encoding overhead to the Windows desktop. But if we were to look towards details and look, for example, at any of the Cisco services, again, same sort of thing with Microsoft Teams, it's really doing nothing because the bulk of the work is done on the uh, on the endpoint. Um, so if again, like we did with Microsoft Teams, we now turn the attention towards the endpoint through the SSH session, the WebEx VDI process is um, sat at around 45%. Now that is less than we saw in Microsoft Teams. It's around about 20% at the moment, but in fairness with Microsoft Teams, we had it in a very much a, a full screen affair. But again, that should, should demonstrate the fact that the video or the webcam is offloaded entirely to the endpoint. And again, just to recap on those same equivalent log files for Cisco. And again, just to clarify, a user wouldn't necessarily need to go here. I'm just showing you out of pure curiosity as to what happens under the hood. So we go to cd slash var slash log. And then in there, we have a number of different log files, but the one that we're specifically interested in is um, Cisco WebEx VDI. And then it's really the current log that um, I'm interested in. And I don't know this one quite as well in terms of the syntax. So let me just quickly check what it was. So stream up firstly, and that's used should be capital U, and that's used to verify whether the virtual channel, i.e. the link between the endpoint and the virtual desktop is up, which you can see it is. Now these log files are far more verbose by default than the Teams equivalent ones. So again, if I grep on, let's say the particular webcam, you can see the amount of activity that the log files generated in terms of communicating with the webcam on the endpoint. So again, I think it's really important just to confirm that an end user wouldn't necessarily go in here at all. These are for support, if, if not developers, but this is just to show really what's up, happening on, under the hood based on previous feedback of people liking to go uh, technical on this stuff. Yeah, so some, some, uh, some programmer has a good sense of humor. Friendly name is <laughs> ugly. Try to get a better name. <laughs> <laughs> good spot. Um, I'm just going to roll forward just because I'm conscious we're kind of running a little bit short on time, but this recaps all the different unified communication apps in terms of their current supported state. And this is specifically for Tenzig endpoints. So here we see Tenzig Windows 10 IoT, and here we see Tenzig Linux, specifically it's our NOS um, image, which supports Citrix. So we can you can see we've got a yes across the board, with the exception, as we mentioned before, with Avaya 1X. So currently that isn't supported by Linux. 
The other thing to mention is the web app um, optimization. So that's if you're using, and again, the question came up early, if you're using either the Teams web app or the Cisco WebEx web app, i.e. running those inside a browser on the virtual desktop, you can leverage Citrix browser content redirection, but at the moment, it's only supported by the Windows endpoints, the Windows CWA. Uh, there's some work happening with BCR in Linux, so maybe in the not too distant future that situation might change, but as of now, it's uh, firmly on the Windows CWA. And I think that brings us um, to poll question three, and then should bring us to the, uh, the end of the webinar, Stephanie, please. Okay, and I just wanted to double check. This one is about which um, application? Because I have four questions. Yeah. Or do we go to the? Okay, just double check. Yeah, that's right. It's the, which which UC platform are you using? So again, it's just for us to understand uh, what what's being used out there, really. Let's hope every, everybody hasn't ticked to buy a 1X. Okay, so that's that's good, and that's honestly uh, kind of where we pitched it. Again, I think for the other, if you've got specific interest, feel free to ask a question at the end, and we can take that away. And um, yeah, but for the most part, it looks like we, we're well covered there. Okay, so we, we are really running a little bit short of time, but I did, as mentioned multiple times, throw up a different slide for Teams optimization, really a recap and summary plus pointers towards firstly Microsoft Teams with various things we've discussed. So um, move that back. So you've got the ability of overriding the performance estimator on Citrix Workspace app for Windows. This particular registry key, which again is covered in this Citrix article, which I'll come back to in a moment, is really useful for verifying state of team optimization and also even disabling it as well again for for debug and the processes or processes that um, you want to be monitoring so on the VDA it's CTX GFX which is the encoding overhead of Citrix and then teams the obviously the native teams app and then these are the processes on the endpoint so WFICA is Citrix workspace app and then HDX teams or HDX RTC engine are the processes that, that sit on the endpoint. And then those logging locations I mentioned are covered here. Now, the, the links here, these are really, really important. Now, and I have to refer to these pretty much every day in all honesty. These two here are updated probably daily, if not weekly, and worst case monthly by Citrix, because Teams is obviously a forever, a forever changing kind of environment where as you saw through some of the examples, the desktop app, app is moving at a, at a frequent rate. So that is, should really be your go-to if you're deploying Teams with Citrix in an optimized mode, that those two things right there should be your, your go-to in terms of how to configure, um, how to troubleshoot, and again, any specific known limitations. And again, it's important to emphasize with the known limitations that they're not necessarily specific to the endpoint, or even Citrix, sometimes they are specific to the SDK um, that uh, Microsoft provide. And they are covered both in this particular link here and this Microsoft link here, which covers Teams for VDI, uh, because that same SDK is offered out to other vendors as well. So that's a good place to check to see if there is a limitation, like we talked about the blurred background before or earlier, to understand if it is a limitation, where is it a limitation? And you know, who do we have to talk to to hopefully address that in future versions? And then lastly, on the Cisco WebEx side, we've got the equivalent thing. So here's a compatibility guide for understanding different version um, um, understandings as far as backwards compatibility. And then also the MSIs. Now, this is a really good point, that obviously, many people have mentioned, but again, these MSIs, they're specific to the virtual desktop, nothing to do with the, with the endpoint. And the same thing for the for the switches as well. They have to be enabled to enable the VDI functionality, but they're all done inside the, the VDA. You've also got the equivalent processes there, 
both that sit on the Citrix VDA and the endpoint, as well as that endpoint login location that I referred to. And then finally, the deployment guide for uh, Cisco WebEx. Uh, so that is covered, but Cisco is a little bit different in terms of their content isn't probably as publicly available. You obviously have to have a, an agreement with Cisco and I would, I would sort of urge that uh, any Cisco customers out there make contact with Cisco to get the, the latest and greatest guides from, from their teams. And uh, if necessary, we can, we can assist with that as well, but, but they should be responsible for providing you with the deployment guide specific to the version that, uh, that you're deploying. So that brings us to the end. I'm sorry we're two minutes late. Um, there's just one final poll question and then hopefully if we've covered the questions, that's it, but I'll gladly take any other questions that may have come in since, Carl. No additional questions. So, someone asked, how does uh, Tenzig compare to iGel? And I've been posting them links that I found on the iGel site, you know, for I, uh, Tenzig uh, success stories, so. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's a question we get we get asked a lot. You know, we pretty much in every POC we we go head to head. You know, I'd like to think that we're a, a bit more nimble. We take we take an approach of making things easier out of the box. So, you know, we're we're all about less clicks to get to a point where you can connect to Citrix. And we have an approach that we're we like to be like a zero client. We're not a true zero client in the fact that we have a proprietary chip. But uh, we're certainly a much more lean um, distribution that supports just Citrix, and it's set up in a, a, I guess, a kiosk style or a zero client style mode where you're not having to turn off things like uh, task bars and, and desktop window managers to get you to a point you just want to log into uh, to uh, Citrix. And I think the other equivalent thing or thing worthy to mention is that there aren't the same sort of licensing constraints with Tenzig as far as things like, like the management tool, um, any support subscriptions. Um, but check us, check us both out. Um, you know, some people have preference. It's like anything, you know, people have preference to one or the other. And, uh, you know, like I say, we go head to head, to head with, uh, with them all the time. So it's best so when for I each buy, user to check out what suits. So when I buy a Tenzig device, I get the software, I get the management, I get support. I don't have to right. buy extra yeah, licenses. I yeah, I, I don't like answering this question because it's making our sales guys' life uh, easy. But yeah, the, the simple answer is it is it is bundled. You know, you buy one Tenzig client or you buy several thousand. The management is is inclusive. The uh, the firmware is inclusive for effectively the warranty or the lifetime of, of, of the product, which by default is three years. So yeah, everything is bundled in. No hidden costs. All right, there's a lot more questions that, I mean, questions are popping in, but most of these, uh, uh, Stephanie can send you those offline and you can answer those offline. Else yeah. we'll probably be here for another 20 minutes answering questions. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, it's good, always good to get questions. So yeah, feel free to uh, send those over, Stephanie and Carl. and and I can either answer them directly or I can distribute them to uh, to my coworkers uh, in uh, in each location. So that's that's yep. great. So I'm sorry again we've run over a little bit, but um, I think we uh, I think we got everything I wanted to cover and, and more. So thank you. Yeah. Do you want to? And we have a few people still here. Do you want to run the one last question that we had? Oh yes, yes, please. Yeah. I'll throw that out there. How did I? How did I forget that one? <laughs> I know it's about getting stuff. <laughs> so yeah, if everybody could just answer, please, the uh, the final question. Oh, yeah. I just put the the link to get a a demo in the uh, chat window. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know this was your last poll question. <laughs> I'll give you guys um, a couple more seconds, and then um, then we'll close things out because I do have one last slide. Because I know some of you probably want to know about the giveaway. Let's see. Looks like most of you have voted, so I'll go ahead and close with that, and then I will share my one last slide. Can you see it? Yes, there it is. Um, all right, always makes me happy when go to webinar 
agrees and does what it's supposed to do. <laughs> Um, thank you guys. Thank you so much for today's presentation. It was um, a lot of good discussion, um, lots of good questions. Um, I know some of you might have opted in for a chance to win an Amazon gift card. And those of you who've been on a webinar with us before where there's a prize, <laughs> probably know that um, I like to be fair. So what I do is I pull the attendance report after the webinar is done because some of you guys register after we're already underway. So I wanna give everyone a fair shot. I'll pull the report, we'll use a random number generator to pick a winner, and I will email you. Um, so look out for an email from me, but you can also keep an eye on our Twitter account to find out who won the prize. And um, with that, oh, just man, want to thank you. Oh man, I thought the moderator you. got the $150 <laughs> Amazon gift card. Oh. I mean, what about the oh. host? <laughs> oh, the presenter. <laughs> I mean, we work hard. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Carl. Thanks for being Thanks, here Stephanie. today. Thanks, Carl. Great session. Right. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Um, be on the lookout for the recording link. And I'm pretty sure I have a PDF of the slide deck to share. And we'll get that out. So um, be on the lookout for that tomorrow. All right. Everyone have awesome. a great afternoon. Bye. Thanks, right. everyone. Bye. Bye.